So I mentioned the Steelers too, and I didn't even mean to try to pull this back into some really? sort of relevance and connectivity uh -oh. to our show today. They have a preseason game, one left. Most teams do. Four played last night. Russell Wilson is starting the preseason finale as the Steelers try to figure out, will it be him or will it be Justin Fields week one? Here is Wilson talking about starting that final preseason game. I'm excited to get back on the field. You know, last week was great to be out there for the first time, you know, putting the pads on and everything else. And, and, uh, and you know, obviously we didn't get the win and everything else, but uh, I think the big thing for us is just, you know, executing and, and, and us making our plays and, and doing our thing. There's some things that we've done really well. There's some things that we need to be, be better at. That's the part of playing. It's part of the fun about the preseason. You learn things and, uh, and, and you translate that to the practice field as well. Um, like I mentioned to you guys, it, I think well, somebody asked me, you know, would we be concerned if, um, you know, are you concerned right now or anything else? And I'm, absolutely not. You know, absolutely not. Because I, the reason being, as I told you guys, is because of the level of practices we've had against one of the best defenses every day and, and how, how, uh, how we've shown up there. So I think the best thing that we can do is, you know, just slow our minds down, you know, play really clean football. Um, and, and also to, you know, um, enjoy the process, man. This is, you know, sometimes you're going to be in a game. There's going to be a time in this season where, gonna, where it's going to be the first quarter and we didn't score. And are we going to panic and worry? Absolutely not. Um, you know, we're going to win the game in the fourth quarter. And that's just what it's going to be. And uh, that's, that's the mentality you got to have. It all makes sense. It all makes perfect sense. But the reality is when we're in this evaluation process in the preseason and we're trying to figure out specifically who the quarterback is going to be, all you have to go with is what you see when you have access to the team's performance. And it's very easy to say, never mind the fact that we suck tonight, our practices are awesome. Trust us. <laughs> we're great. We're, we're lighting it up. Amazing things are happening at the thing that you don't get to watch. But for the mm -hmm. games, yeah, sorry, that's the way it goes. But you know what? I was on with the folks at 93.7 The Fan in Pittsburgh on Wednesday, and they reminded me that last year I was one of the ones that that got duped by Kenny Pickett in the preseason because last August, mm -hmm. Kenny Pickett looked pretty good. And, you know, there's good. so much that goes into what your objective is as a team. And Sims has talked about this before. You can, if you want, go out there in the preseason and specifically make an attempt to make someone look good because there isn't a whole mm -hmm. lot of game planning going on. If you really want to showcase someone, if you want to make someone look good, there's a way to do it. And if you want to keep your cards close to the vest and play very vanilla and you don't want anyone to know what's coming week one because the Steelers go to Atlanta, Arthur Smith, the new offensive coordinator, going right back to the place that fired him. Maybe he wants to show no cards to the Falcons. So it's a basic nothing performance in the preseason but since that's what we see it's easy to say oh my god what's wrong with the Pittsburgh offense well not only that but I think it it, you, it differs from team to team the way they want to go about the preseason so if you are for instance the Los Angeles Rams right you don't play anybody in the preseason they haven't played anybody in the preseason I think since 2017 when Jared Goff got a couple of drives in like the first preseason game and ever since then Sean McVay has been like I'm not playing my guys there right because they weight the joint practices very highly that's something that they want to do and you could say the same thing sort of about uh, the Atlanta Falcons right with Raheem Morris comes obviously from the Los Angeles Rams they play Michael Penix Jr. in the first game and they don't play him anymore in the preseason which seems a little bit backward especially because he's the number eight overall pick and he's not going to play, but neither here nor there, I guess. When you're looking at Pittsburgh, though, and Mike Tomlin and the way he does things in the preseason, he always talks about how you weight things that are in stadium in the evaluation higher than you do at practice. And so I think that's how you have to look at Pittsburgh a little bit differently in this situation, right? Because, but I think that what you said and, and you know, with the Sims point is true. There are times where you can go out there and make somebody look good. I think that is absolutely what they were trying to do last year with Kenny Pickett at quarterback because he was a young guy, right? You know, going into another season, trying to establish some confidence with him, Matt Canada as a play caller. Then you get to the regular season and the wheels completely fall off of that train. So it's a little bit different, I think, when you have somebody who is an experienced play caller in Arthur Smith, somebody who is an experienced quarterback with Russell Wilson, 
And, you know, he is still dealing with a calf injury. Arthur Smith said this week, you know, he wasn't 100% last week. There were some things that he didn't call for him that he did call for Justin Fields. But still, when you look at it and the offense doesn't perform well when you have presumably the starting quarterback out there, it is going to make you question things a little bit more with Pittsburgh because of the way they run things than it might with some other teams. And that's the other thing that, they just need to understand, especially with Russell Wilson. We have all of his years with Seattle. We have the two lost years with the Broncos. Most people want to see which Russell Wilson has shown up in Pittsburgh. And what I saw last week, and look, it's tough to bust through the recency bias, but what I saw last week looked a lot like 2022-2023 Russ. I wanted to see 21 or prior Russ. And that guy didn't get much of a chance to do anything because you see Gregory Russo right there repeatedly eating the lunch of Broderick Jones. I mean, Russ didn't get much of a chance to do anything. They couldn't get third downs converted to first downs. Mike Tomlin talked about that after the game. The pass protection was not good. So who's going to look better in that situation? It's going to be the guy that has the pop in his legs in Justin Fields. And mm-hmm. with I've been saying this all week, with Jalen Warren out for who knows how long with a hamstring injury, he's the tailback that gives them explosion and pop and acceleration. If he's not there, it's all the more reason to think about Justin Fields. But... You know, you get different political things that go on within an organization. You have different people that have their opinions, their biases, their preferences, and they can speak those things into existence if they want. And if Tomlin is hell-bent on Russell Wilson starting the season, if he made him some promise or just has some belief, is still influenced by memories of Russell Wilson in his best years of what he can do and and what he can do in the fourth quarter of a game. He's seen him, and we've all seen him kind of muddle through a game. Remember the four interceptions in the first half of the NFC Championship in 2014, early 2015 against the Green Bay Packers. They came back and won that Mm -hmm. game. And what's the Steelers' vibe? I think it's smart for Russell Wilson to play that card because that's the Steelers' vibe under Mike Tomlin. We can look like crap for three quarters, 14 minutes, and 50 seconds But as long as we got that 10 seconds left, there's still a chance we're going to kick your ass. Well, I mean, it it really goes back to, you know, Pete Carroll in Seattle, right? I mean, because that's what he reminded me of when he's talking talking about winning a game in the fourth quarter. I mean, how many videos have we seen of Pete Carroll in the locker room running around screaming his head off and saying that exact thing? And it's part of why we don't think of Pete Carroll as, as being as old as he is. You can win a game in the fourth quarter. And that is what we've seen Russell Wilson do time and time and time again. And you're right. It matches what the Steelers do, especially it seems like every time they play Baltimore, there is just some sort of play and it comes down to the fourth quarter. And it used to be, you know, last year at some points, Kenny Pickett was somehow able to drive them down the field. I think that Russell Wilson still has some capability of doing that, especially when he's got guys who can be explosive like a George Pickens. You know, Pat Fryermuth, I think, is one of these young emerging tight ends. that if he stays healthy, he can certainly be one of those dudes. So... Because of that and all that veteran experience, I mean, it would not still shock me, even if we don't see him perform all that well this weekend, if Russell Wilson is still the quarterback, the starting quarterback, the QB1 of the Pittsburgh Steelers in week one when they got to go play Atlanta. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.